I'm Rick Johansson, and this is Iron Echo Design. Inkscape really clicked for me when I realized it's packed with tools that make complicated designs very easy. This is a good example. We'll make this today. It's an abstract background using the Live Path Effects Stitch Subpaths. And if you're new to Inkscape, you might come across something like this where it's buried in the tools and you see a bucket of jargon like that and you think, not gonna touch that just yet. I'll show you how easy it is to do. The concept works like this. You set up some lines, they're stitched together, and then you can go in one drag, make something new like this. And this example here is special to me. When I was in college for my design courses, we had to do these type of things by hand and make dots on a horizontal and a vertical on a piece of paper and use a ruler to connect the lines. Now in Inkscape, you can make it in two seconds, flip it, have two of them, you can move them and Look at that, just instantly. So that's the point. We're gonna take a feature with a complicated name that's actually pretty easy to do, make an abstract background like this, and at the very end, I'll throw in how to do the blur setting so it kind of glows like this. All right, so let's begin by setting up our workspace. On Inkscape 1.2, you can hit this wrench on a piece of paper, and it brings up your document properties. If you're on an older version of Inkscape, go to File, document properties. On your menu, there's lots of choices. Let's change orientation to landscape. I'll hit the page and for background color, we'll change it to black. And finally for format, let's go down to B1, 700 by 1000 millimeters. Okay, first let me show you where the tool is, how to use it, the very basics. Choose the Bezier Pen tool. I have a dedicated tutorial to Bezier Pen, so if you need the absolute, absolute basics on that, check that out. If you know how to use it, click, and as you pull down, it's gonna show where your line will be. Holding control will help you lock in that vertical axis. Double click, that creates a path. Now, if you can't see it, double check, go to Object, Fill and Stroke. On Fill, you wanna be on X, so you see nothing. On the Stroke tab, you should have the stroke activated, and you can choose your color, whichever one you want. I'm on Color Wheel, which shows the display like this. Okay, get that out of the way. With the first path selected, do Control D. That will duplicate it, then hold Control again and drag it to the right. By holding Control, you're now locking in the horizontal because you do want it to be perfectly aligned for the effect to work better. Hold Shift and click back to the first. Now go to Path, down to Combine. In general, a lot of the path effects need to be done on either groups or something like this that's been combined. Keep that in mind as you're designing other projects. If path effects aren't working, group it or combine it. I've got them selected. Go to path again, path effects. In your sidebar menu, you'll see nothing and you'll say, what's going on here? Click on the plus at the bottom. And this is the live path effects selector. You can type in the one you want up here, or if this is your first time, look around. It won't always be in the same configuration as I have here, but we want the one that says stitch subpaths. Kind of confusing name, but a very simple to use tool. I'll hover over the information. Draw perpendicular lines between subpaths of a path like rungs on a ladder. All right, I select it. I'll click off of everything so you can see it. Our original paths on the left and the right are gone and Inkscape has stitched what it calls the rungs of the ladder. One, two, three, four, five. So back to our menu. If your menu goes blank, it means it's not selected. I select it again. Number of paths, five. Let's choose 35, enter, and you've got 35 subpaths. To affect these lines that are now stitched together, go up to Edit Paths by Node, and you'll see a diamond node on each corner. Grab that, and you can drag it wherever you want, and they're stitched together, and they move together. To show you some of the range, let's go to 50 paths. See how it gets tighter? Let's do 100, and it starts to see some monitor effect there. Maybe we'll go back to 70 because watch this. The only other part of this menu down here for today, stitch path, click on this one right here. It says edit on canvas. You'll get, normally it'll show up very, very faintly. You can barely see it. This little note up here. If you can't see it, click and drag around it and bring it closer to your project. This is actually two nodes on top of each other. And if I drag one of the nodes over, this is now going to be another way that you can affect your new design. Watch this. I'll bend it. It almost looks like a bird flying. Let's fix it. Here's my vector bird. I'll go back to stitch subpaths. I mean, looks like a manta ray. To me, it's pretty cool that this is built in, just sitting there in the live path effects menu. 
put that aside for now. Sometimes people ask in the comments, where do you get your ideas for tutorials? Well, this one is from a rabbit hole where I was looking at one of those route maps that showed all the different airline flights superimposed on top of a map. It just looks so cool. I wanted to create it in Inkscape and I got this is how far I got. I'll show you. This is the look I was going for, but I can't get the routes to bend because on the airline maps are always arcing. So I'll ask you, do you have a technique or have you done this where you can actually bend the routes here? I had a conversation with Adam Bellis. He has his own channel. Go check it out. And he's given suggestions in the comments before. So Adam, do you have an idea on this one? Anyway, that's what led to this. But let's go back to the theme of the video, which is how to make complicated stuff like this using the tool, which is easy to use. We'll just go back to lines. I'll take the Bezier pen tool and do one line straight down, holding control to lock it in. I'll make a line horizontal, a smaller one going down, and then a smaller one going horizontal. These will be our original paths. I'll select everything together and do path combine. Let's double check our fill and stroke. For fill, I want it off, so no fill for stroke. Let's do full white and stroke style. It's at one millimeter so you can see it, but I wanna be at 0 0.20 millimeters. Go to path, path effects, or if it's already open, click on the path effects tab, hit the plus, stitch subpaths and you get this mess. We'll go to number of paths, let's do 70. And it's a little bit more interesting. Here's where your creativity comes in. You can click and drag. If you go to edit paths by node, take these nodes anywhere you want. So let's drag the top node down to the bottom, the bottom right. And you'll see the more you crisscross, the more interesting design elements come back up. I'll take this one that was in the bottom left and bring it up to the top. See how it's creating these like curves right there? I'll put it over here somewhere. I'll grab this one and bring it over here. Anywhere, it doesn't have to be exact. Maybe put this one up a little higher. Got a good arc right there. I do wanna make a focal point that's gonna have no lines in it. So for this vertical, I'm gonna stretch it out and try to get like a black hole. I'll take the bottom one and yeah, that'll be good. This will be the top of my hole. See this double ridge, I like that. I like that a lot. And if you remember from the original paths, that leaves this node and this node, that's that last horizontal. So if I wanna create an arc down here, if I bring the back one forward, it'll just double up the same type of arc, which is cool. Instead, I'll bring the bottom one forward. And there's my hole. You see it forming right here? I wanna have some heavy contrast in the center. This looks too symmetrical, so I'll take the back one and bring it down. Now I can control the shape of my hole. That's what I want. I'm trying to get as close to the example as possible to show you can replicate this stuff. You get the idea. You can play with this for hours. This is what happened. I got into a rabbit hole having fun with this. Uh, let me show you how to actually add a pop of color to it and do that special blur trick. So we'll call this our finished for our, actually, there's one more thing I wanna show you. It's an interesting way to take it to the next level. I'm gonna do control D and save that because that is useful. And this will become our experimental one. When you have it selected, hit Stitch Path when you're on the Path Effects menu. Look for, it'll come up somewhere. There it is, it's up here, these nodes. This is the closest I got to making my airline flight path curve. If I take this here, I can bend it. It's kind of bending in on itself. It looks a little sinister with this arc here. Maybe that's too much. We'll use this new modified one. So here's how you do the glow. Control D, that duplicates it. And I wanna drop this one underneath. So if I have it selected, go to hierarchy and drop it to the bottom. Nothing changed, but it's under there. Go up to filters, blurs. There's a whole bunch of choices, but choose cross blur. I played with this before. If you want the exact settings, I have it on brightness around one, horizontal blur around 2.6, and vertical blur just past 10. Do live preview, do apply, close. If I zoom in, you'll see that's giving it a nice glow, but I'm gonna add a color to that glow. So I still have that bottom one selected. I can go to fill and stroke, and on the stroke tab, let's take this over to drag this around. Look at that, look, it's red. Go to some type of orange. Something in there looks good. Uh, you can make the effect have even more power to it if you go to stroke style. Remember, we have the glow bottom one selected here. Let's change it from the 0.20 millimeters to 0.35. And see that it adds some brightness. The other way to do it is to go back to the top one. If you double click now on the white line, if you can get it, you'll know you're back on it when you see the white selected. So I want stroke paint white. Go to your path effects. If you're on 70 for number of paths, pump that up to maybe 100. Now it really accents the bright white layer. Maybe try 200, what happens there? 
200 washes it out a little bit. Maybe do 150, and there you go. And that is what I wanted to show you today. It is one of the live path effects just sitting there waiting for us to use. Super easy, makes complicated backgrounds like this. Thanks again for watching. If you have questions or suggestions, let me know, and see you next time.